Buenos días. El día de hoy, eh, en primer lugar, quiero agradecer al profesor Pedro Nobre haberme invitado a dirigirme a ustedes en esta tan importante ceremonia y me ha pedido que reflexione un poco sobre los logros de la salud sexual en la última década, los últimos años y cuáles son los grandes desafíos que se presentan en este momento. Eh, los grandes logros, pues básicamente ha sido el reconocimiento de la salud sexual como un derecho que posibilita otros derechos humanos y por lo tanto que es importante para la salud en general. Tal vez es, ese es uno de los eh, aspectos más importantes, además de logros eh, puntuales en cada región, en cada país. Eh, sin embargo, pues sí hemos tenido eh, grandes escollos y desafíos que tienen que ver con cambios también globales que no ocurren únicamente en un país y que nos han mostrado que, que enfrentamos el día de hoy eh, oposición a los derechos humanos, a los derechos sexuales, a los derechos reproductivos en muchas esferas y en muchos países. Sin embargo, eh, el impacto que ha tenido la consolidación del movimiento, eh, el, eh, enorme, la enorme contribución de programas académicos como el de ustedes y todo lo que pueden lograr los profesionales a través de la investigación, pues es una, nos alienta a seguir adelante ante los grandes desafíos eh, que tenemos en, también mundiales, a los cuales no somos ajenos. Yo creo que el primer gran desafío es colocar a la salud sexual como un fenómeno que se intersecta con otros fenómenos sociales, que no es únicamente una cuestión de salud vista desde un punto de vista biologicista, sino eh, social, antropológico, y que tiene que ver cuando nosotros hacemos salud sexual o trabajamos en salud sexual, también estamos trabajando en favor de eh, la disminución de la pobreza, de la disminución de la violencia de todos tipos, particularmente de aquella basada en género o la violencia sexual y que además pues otros desafíos que tienen que ver con los eh, adelantos tecnológicos como puede ser por ejemplo todo lo que tenemos en, en inteligencia artificial, en robótica que nos obligan a, a pensar de un modo diferente. Y ese modo diferente es un modo más interseccional, más inclusivo, pensar en las poblaciones que se han quedado atrás y a las cuales tenemos que atender a través de un enfoque de justicia sexual. Por eso yo felicito al profesor Nobre y a ustedes que inician eh, este curso porque creo que que les va a proporcionar las herramientas para realmente enfrentar un mundo con incertidumbre, un mundo cambiante, pero también abierto a todas las oportunidades de una nueva visión del mundo. Muchas gracias. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, dear colleagues, young researcher and less young researcher in human sexuality in the program, in the PhD program in human sexuality at the University of, of Porto. I'm very happy to give my perspective for the World Sexual Health uh, Day. For me, the most important event since 2014 is the declaration of the sexual rights. It is important to link the enhancement, the development, and the concretization of sexual health to sexual rights. Because we know that in many places around us and outside the Western world, the most important determinant of sexual health is the social condition, the social situation, and the limitation to sexual rights. So it, is it was an, a very important development 
to be able to include, to develop a declaration of sexual rights and to include the notion of sexual rights inside the definition of sexual health, considering that in sexual health is possible only in a place where sexual rights are possible and are developed and are understood. So this is an important situation and it is even more important at the present times because we are witnessing, we are attending a backlash in sexual rights. In many countries, in many situations, we see that the sexual rights of people who are stigmatized, excluded, and, and, and not accepted as full citizens in many countries, and the reproductive rights of women in particular, and in particular, the right to contraception, the right to abortion, those rights are threatened in many countries and many countries around us. Not speaking of the situation of war, conflict, and climate uh, 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 and climate situation, which which are one of the major obstacles to sexual health at the moment. So if we want to develop and to install sexual health around us, we need to make sure that sexual rights are accepted and are recognized in many countries. And, the, and it is important to link also the idea of health and sexual health into the universe of human rights. It, it is a very recent idea to link health, sexual health, and human rights, and its uh, intersection with the definition of sexual rights. But nowadays, we see that sexual rights are not enough to guarantee sexual health, and that we need the sexual justice, which is the last uh, um, development of the work of the World Association for Sexual Health, the develop of the sexual justice declaration to go beyond the idea of rights, to guarantee the sexual rights themselves when they are threatened in many countries. By developing the sexual justice declaration, we intend to address directly to powers, to government, to organization, to stakeholders, to all those who have the possibility to reestablish equality and equity, both in the sexual life of people and access to sexual health care. So thank you for your attention. I wish everybody an excellent World Sexual Health Day and wish above all the, the, <laughs> the development of sexual justice for all everywhere and every time. Thank you. The situation of sexual health uh, globally uh, uh, continues to uh, show improvement at certain levels and deceleration uh, at other levels affected by uh, global factors, by political factors, by security factors, and also by crisis uh, factors. Uh, the uh, achievements towards the uh, sustainable development goals in relation to sexual health uh, remain challenging and uh, very difficult. More so now with the increasing uh, uh, crisis and conflict globally in the Middle East, in Ukraine and many other places, the first things to fall out are the essential components of sexual reproductive health and rights uh, that suffer the most. Uh, women, uh, children, uh, uh, issues around sexual justice and equity will suffer the most in terms of access to services, uh, in terms of coverage by services, and in terms of uh, equity in that regard. We uh, all should join efforts to continue to strengthen uh, sexual reproductive health and rights, especially uh, at times of uh, crisis, and to try to prevent this fallout that happens all the time especially in these times of conflicts and problems. Hello, my name is Espen Esther Pedelli Benstra and I'm the President of the European Federation for Sexology. In medicine, 
Sexuality is considered one of the so-called natural functions of our bodies, in line with urination, stools, appetite, thirst and sleep. Sexuality is inborn physiology. And more than that, sexuality is a tool of communication. Our bodily surfaces become a meeting place for intimacy and tokens of love. Sexuality can carry us, carry us into moments of explosive happiness and times of relaxed content. Even spirituality is inspired by sexuality. And sexuality is everywhere. All mammals enjoy their sexual encounters. Sexuality entertains life in that it sustains the longevity of the species. And more than that, sexuality entertains us while we are living. Science demonstrates that the better we experience our sexuality, the better is our general health. And more than that, those of us who experience good sexuality have better prospects of longevity. Good and satisfying sexuality is a source of well-being, and well-being is a requisite for peace of mind. And more than that, a collective peace of mind within us renders more peace between us. We must rejoice this magnificent gift of nature that we can enjoy with no other costs than consideration and safeguarding in order to avoid coercion, exploitations and infections. All human beings should have the right to all benefits that sexuality can hand over to us. Tracing back to Eve's and Adam's fall of sin, sexuality has been contaminated with fear, ugliness, greasiness, shame and sin. Many former and present authoritarian leaders have sought to gain control over just about all shades of sexuality. Like the right to sexual expression, the right to live according to one's talents of attraction, the right to ownership of one's own body, the right to equality, the right to decide when and when not to have children, the right to contraception, the right to abortion, the right to freedom from coercion, the right to positive offerings of belonging, the right to the all above mentioned shades of pleasure and peace. As long as these rights are not universally granted, we all need to be reminded about the benefits that dwell within our abilities to be sexual and the fact that many human beings are suffering and even dying for the sake of their sexuality. It calls for a daily awareness, but also for one day every year when the whole world is inspired to take a closer look at all that is lacking, and not least at all there is to gain. That day is named the World Sexual Health Day. The date is September 4th. Keep it dear in your minds. Thank you.